Hello, my name is Nell and I have things to say. Uh, I'm going to put a trigger warning and a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. I will be talking about um, sexual trauma, sexual abuse, and I will also be getting kind of TMI with like female parts. <laughs> so just be aware of that going in and please make a, an informed decision on whether or not to watch this video because it might be triggering to you or you might just think it's icky. Either way, don't watch it if you don't feel comfortable with that. Um, I'm going to be talking about how abuse always has aftershocks that you never, sometimes you don't see them coming, sometimes they're not the obvious ones. I was at, I saw an urogynecologist recently. I thought that I had bladder issues and I honestly thought that there was something wrong with my bladder, possibly related to the fact that I've been in a wheelchair for nearly 10 years. Um, so I went to see a urogynecologist to get tested and after the consult the conclusion she drew was that there's nothing wrong with my bladder, my bladder is structurally fine. There is however something wrong with my urethra. She had to insert a catheter as part of this, as part of this consult and she said to me, this shouldn't hurt, this should not even be uncomfortable. So, and she said if it is, then we'll start to narrow down our issue. When she tried inserting the catheter, I cried. I wailed. It was so painful. I felt like being, I was being cut. It was so painful. And I mentioned to her that I also experience vaginismus. I've, ex I've spoken about vaginismus in a previous video. I was talking about my IUD and how, why I was getting it in hospital. And I mentioned that I have, I have vaginismus from sexual trauma. And that is where the vaginal muscles are so hyper vigilant and hyper aware of possible threats that the vaginal muscles will just, just lock in. They'll just lock in. They won't really allow anything to get in or out. They will just lock in. It's, I call it stranger danger. So when I was speaking to this urogynecologist, she said, actually, there's a lot of the same muscle groups in that area. So if you experience vaginismus, you might also experience this hypersensitive urethra. And that's, that's what I'm experiencing. So I have to look into some medications to just calm that shit down. And I got pissed. I was so pissed off when I heard this. My abusive relationship ended over 10 years ago. And now, 10 years later, that abuse is affecting the way I pee. In, I did not expect that. I didn't count on that. It's been just a little problem building up, building up, building up. And I just got pissed at my ex. How dare you? How dare you? You probably don't even think of me. And yet my body cringes about you every time I need to pee. Like, how dare, how dare you? That's the thing that people don't realize sometimes about abuse, especially people who haven't experienced it. You cringe at the slightest things you don't mean to, and you're not thinking, oh, that person looks like my abuser, I'm going to be scared. Sometimes it's just you look at somebody and they have a look and you feel sick. You feel sick, your chest feels hot. If you think about it later, it's because you realize they smiled like your abuser or they walked like your abuser, or they said something that your abuser said. You have no control over it. You don't, you don't constantly think about it. You're not obsessing over seeing abuse in every situation, but you are so hardwired and it's in your muscles. It's in your muscles. This aftershock. I was just so angry after this appointment. Thankful that there's nothing structurally wrong with my bladder. But angry that after 10 years, this, I was going to call him a boy or a man or a human being, but I don't actually want to use any of those terms to refer to him. That, it, that entity is still doing a number on me. I've been ther in therapy for 10 years. Like I've been working through this nonsense and yet something is still creeping up. And it's funny though, because, you know, after being aware of that, 
now I'm starting to try to make a conscious effort to like go, okay, this bladder issues, it's not to do with my bladder, it's, it's because of that thing. Um, so I'm just going to like try to overcome that with some, with some mental gymnastics as well as medication. But it just pissed me off. It just pissed me off. How dare you? How dare he? How dare he? How dare he still be somewhere in my brain? I think it's something that we don't, we don't realize. People who've been abused, it's amazing the amount of things pop up later that you realize are those cringes, those winces, that your body is still doing that even if you are not aware of them. And it is not your fault. You're not broken. You are not broken. You might need to be rewired just a little bit, but you're not broken. And if you find something that is that aftershock of abuse, try not to think about the monster who set that in process, who started that cycle. They don't deserve your energy. Just try to try to tackle the problem, but I don't know. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know how to help others because I don't really know how to help myself. I just know that I was mad. I'm still kind of mad. That's all. I just... That's all. Abuse has aftershocks that you have no, no, no way of comprehending, and they can come months, years, decades after the fact. Yeah, that's all. Alright, bless.